Good morning, this is Dr. Rutledge and um, happy to talk to you from Bija, India. And uh, we have exciting news. We're preparing for the first international consensus conference on the mini bypass, the one anastomosis bypass, coming up in Paris. Um, we now have a website for you to sign up for the program, to reserve your hotel rooms, and most importantly, we've been performing a pre-conference survey to help guide us in our discussions, our voting, and being able to model our results after the uh, excellent sleeve consensus conferences that have uh, been put forward. So the data points that are present in the tables in the sleeve conference are data points that we have asked our experts from around the world to address as well. <clears throat> so we've looked at these and today I'm going to report some I think maybe obvious but also surprising findings um, for discussion uh, that will be present at the meeting. And intriguingly these particular... So we're going to talk about the findings of the survey and uh, there are many findings to discuss but specifically this talk this morning is our, on some findings that we find both obvious when we think about it, but also surprising that we had not thought about it or heard other people think about it or discuss it. And so it's brought up for our discussion because we think it has implications for the mini bypass, one anastomosis bypass choice, although it's data from our experts and the medical literature on the sleeve and the band. And I hope that the relationship between those two will become clear as we discuss things further. Now, <clears throat> we want to start off by saying thank you to uh, all of the surgeons that have contributed. Um, we have a total of 100 surgeons, 102 surgeons actually, that have committed so far. Uh, not all of them coming from this particular conference. Um, but we have a great deal of information from experts with experience with almost uh, 20,000 cases uh, from 23 different countries. So we're looking at uh, a survey that has significant power. Uh, let me summarize what we're going to talk about at the beginning here and say something very short and simple. One, that gastroesophageal reflux is a strong causative factor of esophageal cancer. Number two, which I hadn't really thought about until we got back the data on this survey, is that the world literature is growing that clearly states that both the band and the sleeve result in high incidence of postoperative gastroesophageal reflux. Um, what we're going to talk about is uh, various research papers that talk about 20 to 30 percent, and our surveys suggest it's 25 to 30 percent in what our experts see in the band and the sleeve. Number one, the gastroesophageal reflux is strongly associated with or actually causes esophageal cancer. Number two, that our survey data and data in the literature suggests that 20 to 30 percent of sleeve and band patients will suffer new onset gastroesophageal reflux after the procedure in only short-term follow-up in a short so what we're asking is, isn't it obvious then, if you have new onset, high numbers of patients with gastroesophageal reflux after sleeve and band, can't we predict that there's going to be an increased risk of esophageal cancer? And if that's the case, then is it incumbent upon surgeons and patients to be aware of this? for surgeons to educate their patients about this risk of esophageal cancer and in the event of symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux after band or sleeve what therapy should be undertaken and should there be monitoring with uh, say yearly endoscopies to look for gastroesophageal reflux in band and sleeve patients to rule out the development of gastroesophageal reflux and potential Barrett's and esophageal cancer. So that's what we're going to go over today. I think it's very uh, intriguing. It seems like that there are no complexities, but we have not, in general, and the surgeons I've talked to, heard this discussed 
or brought forward. Certainly as far as I have seen, we don't see band surgeons warning their patients. We don't see sleeve surgeons warning their patients about this risk of esophageal cancer. And so we put it forward for advice and direction and to see what people think. <clears throat> the sleeve and the band are popular and now certified restrictive procedures for weight loss. Uh, the sleeve is growing in popularity while the band is declining in popularity, but still in the United States there are vigorous defenders of the lap band. There are growing numbers of studies showing that gastroesophageal reflux is common to very common after both of these procedures in uh, the references provided on our website showed that the risk of esophageal adenocarcinoma increased with frequent gastroesophageal reflux symptoms. The odds ratios in their study would increase 5.5 times for those with reflux symptoms that occurred daily. Langergren et al. showed that, quote, among persons with long-standing and severe symptoms of GE reflux, the odds ratios were increased 44-fold for esophageal cancer. There are 1,600 references on esophageal cancer and reflux in PubMed. There are several studies that are reporting a growing rate of gastroesophageal reflux with the band and the sleeve, including LeBlanc, who showed that 47% had persistent gastroesophageal reflux symptoms in his series, Dr. Weiner, who showed that 15% of his sleeve patients had severe gastroesophageal reflux so unremitting that he was forced to convert them to Roux and Y. Gutchow performed upper gastrointestinal endoscopy on patients after 30 months, range 5 to 67 months, and he showed up to 30% of esophagitis in those endoscope patients after three years. Himpins showed that GE reflux occurred at one year in 22% of sleeve patients and after three years in 21% of band patients. And there are more references on both these topics in PubMed. Now this 20 to 30% number is interesting because it matches our survey results. Again, remember our survey is 102 experts, 23 countries, with experience in over 18,000 cases, and 89% said GE reflux was very common after the lap band. With a much shorter follow-up, 58% said GE reflux was very common after the sleeve. Now we asked them then to quantitate this further. Surgeons reported that prior to operation, only 6% of the relatively low weight band patients that we studied suffered from GE reflux. But post-operatively, they reported it in 26% of cases. Notice this matches the roughly reported numbers from LeBlanc, Wiener, Gutchow, Himpins, and others. In the case of the sleeve, Surgeons reported very similar numbers. Preoperatively, the relatively lower weight, healthier, younger sleeve patients had a 9% reported preoperative GE reflux rate, and postoperative, again with short follow up, was 27%. So we're talking about converting a huge number of band and sleeve patients, a third of them, to GE reflux within a year or two of their operation. We can only imagine what the long-term results of that percentage is going to be over time. So our survey data is confirming other reports in the literature. Finally, the first cases of esophageal cancer are being reported in the band and the sleeve. I think we can conclude, and we're going to listen for the advice of others on this topic, but what seems obvious to me, and it seems uncontroversial, is that acid reflux is unequivocally a strong causative factor or a cause of esophageal cancer. Number two, that restrictive procedures like sleeve and band, obviously because of their restriction, are going to lead to increased rates of gastroesophageal reflux. I mean, if you just think of the physiology, there's an obstruction, you try to eat, and acid is going to reflux back up from the high pressure zone into the low pressure esophagus. So this is expected, it's natural given the physiology of the way these two operations are constructed. And what we find is published data and our survey confirm that up to a third of patients 
are going to develop GE reflux. Imagine hundreds of thousands of band patients in the United States, a third of whom are going to suffer GE reflux within the first years, and we can't imagine what will happen over the longer term. So not unexpectedly, we also need to report the first early cases of esophageal cancer with the band and the sleeve have been reported. What can we conclude from this? Well, we ask the question, should surgeons consider warning their band and sleeve patients that the band and the sleeve may result in GE reflux and the GE reflux is a strong causative factor in esophageal cancer? There are other questions, for example, let's imagine that a surgeon and a patient elect to go ahead and choose the band or the sleeve. Given this potential for esophageal cancer, should they be monitored? In the event that they develop symptoms, what should be done? If endoscopy shows that there is gastroesophageal reflux, gastritis, or Barrett's, what should be done in those cases? In addition, should asymptomatic patients with the band or reflux from, or with the band or the sleeve be monitored um, prophylactically, maybe with endoscopy every year or yearly visits? And uh, in the event that such a patient were lost to follow up, what would be the tragedy of the absence of detection of esophageal cancer? So these are important questions. Uh, again, in thinking about them, each one of the steps in this uh, thinking process seem obvious and logical. Um, but as far as we know, band and sleeve surgeons are not alerting their patients to this risk of esophageal cancer, and so it's a question that we bring up for discussion purposes. It also has implications for the mini bypass in that we are presented with patients who ask our advice on the best therapy. The mini bypass or the one anastomosis bypass has many advantages. But the studies from our survey and other published research suggests that many of our seriously uh, sick, more uh, morbidly obese patients in comparison to the band group with higher BMI have higher rates of preoperative gastroesophageal reflux symptoms and therapy. And intriguingly, the mini bypass results in a profound decrease in symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux according to published reports and to the results of our survey. So these are the latest findings. We'll be interested to hear what your feedback is and thank you very much for listening. Take care.